Welcome to the Adoption Journey Podcast. I'm your host, Tarsha Smith. And thank you so much for joining us once again on this week. If you're checking us out on YouTube, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. If you are on Spotify or Amazon, make sure you give us a follow. I am so excited to have in the building on today, the Rodriguez. Welcome. Hey, how's it going? They have a, a phenomenal, is the word I need to use, story about adoption, about faith, about, and they can tell it way better than I can. So the very first question I want to ask Kristen and Giorgio, can you tell us from the beginning what it was like? Um, let the people know what your journey was in the beginning um, when you first wanted to, when you first wanted to start your family. We can start right there. Ooh. <laughs> you start first. Uh, so uh, starting a family, that was like, we talked about this like almost 20 years ago, starting a family. Okay. And uh, we had some challenges, even though we were young, uh, starting a family was like. I'm still young. Was, uh, <laughs> it was a challenge for us. Uh, so, like, we struggle with infertility, yeah, myself at. Uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome and so getting pregnant was difficult but we did end up getting pregnant and uh, we carried our first son to 36 weeks and we lost him in utero due to placental abruption mm -hmm. and um, that that really really broke us I was you know I broke my heart um, and in the recovery process I had actually looked into adoption but I think mentally, neither one of us were ready to go that route. Okay. And, um, you know, family, doctors, everybody, oh, you're still young. Um, because I was 23 when it happened. They were like, you're still young. Oh, you're you were young. very young. I didn't realize that. I was a baby. I think I realized like two months ago that I was a baby when it happened. Like, yeah. Yes. So everybody's like, you're young. You know, you got like, your whole life ahead of you. So, you know, maybe just get back out there and, you know, try again when you're ready. Okay. And um, so we we waited like seven years. We grew up okay. Ho hold on. I want to stop you right there. Hold on one second. I want to speak to Giorgio very quickly. I want to ask you as a father, because I understand when these things happen, the attention, and maybe rightfully so, kind of all goes towards the mother. Yeah. I want to talk about what was that like for you? I want to ask you. Um, someone speaking about the first tragedy. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Um. It was a uh, it was a difficult time. It was the most difficult thing I've ever had to endure in my life. And when I say in my mm -hmm. life, in general, um, <clears throat> because the other part of it is Kristen almost died after giving birth to our um, uh, unborn. Well, our child who was who was born, still born, basically. So. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I lost, you know, I've lost my first seed and, and then also I almost lost my wife. So at the time, you know, a lot of, yeah, a lot of, a lot of support came through. A lot of people didn't know what to say to us. A lot of friends yeah. kind of disappeared because it's a hard situation for, for anyone to experience, um, even from the outside looking in. So, um, to be honest with you, I kind of had to mourn in silence sometimes. It was so, um, at the time she was so broken, I was so broken inside. But if I showed a super weakness, we would have just crumbled. So okay. I would go to the store and just take longer and cry yeah, in the yeah, car yeah. and pray in the car and stuff like that and come home like, you know, you know like, you know, because mm -hmm. it was, it was so, it was super hard because just like you said, she, she was, she, she was the mother of our child. Um, so she carried, physically carried the baby the almost full term. And I mean, it was, I mean, we had to have a casket funeral because the the baby was considered full term, you know? So, um, so yeah, it was very, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was very hard. Okay. Okay. Morning so seven years, I'm sorry, say that again. That morning in silence part, like he had to, I think he felt more so that he had to be strong for me in that period. Yeah. yeah. And I think people don't realize that uh, 
in these situations, like men are actually going through it too. Like it was really that's and that's why I asked the question yeah. because men go through it too, and people yeah. tend to forget that. Mm-hmm. So that's why I wanted you to speak on. Yeah. With yeah, for you. So seven years goes by. Yeah, so seven years went by, and then um, we, 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 you know, scrounged up the faith and to, to try again. So the first pregnancy, we did get pregnant successfully off of fertility uh, drugs, fertility treatments. Okay. And then this time, um, we went another route of that same fertility drugs, and we wasn't it was unsuccessful. So we did a. Uh, a process of fertility surgery called um, ovarian drilling. Um, it's an old school. It's an old school thing. Sorry, my kids. It's an old school okay. process. Um, and we ended up being successfully pregnant, okay. and um, to the point where we, everyone was so like excited, like all friends and family, we we're having this big gender reveal, and we were going to go find out the sex of the baby. Um, and we were going to, we wanted to know, we just couldn't you know, wait. We was going to know, but not, not yeah. anybody else know, because everybody else was so excited. We're talking about 75 to 100 people invited to this party. And wow. um, uh, what was the, um, what was the, uh, how far along were you then again? It was 18 or almost 20 weeks. Almost 20 weeks. So uh, we were getting ready to fly out of town um, and. We went to find out the sex of the baby, and there was no heartbeat. And a tragedy struck. Oh. So, yeah, so that. And so then it even got even more complicated because um, we had to go down to uh, South Florida, it's like West Palm Beach area, to yeah. get a DNC, right? DNC. D and E. D and E. Not a DNC. Because they could not. The doctor suggested it actually yeah, because of my first trauma. Um, everything yeah. was going to happen at the same hospital, and uh, even at twenty weeks, they you, they induce labor and they make you deliver. Even at twenty weeks, and my doctor was like, because of the trauma from before, she didn't want me to experience like, in, you know, more trauma or any kind of medical things. She didn't want me to experience that. So she sent me down to an, an abortion clinic. And the crazy thing about going to that abortion clinic, is, I remember this so vivid. We talk about it in the book. We also have a movie script. We're trying to pursue doing a movie. Um, and really? there was, I mean, tons, about 100 protesters outside of there. And we got out and they were uh, calling us baby killers and yeah. Looking at us from across the street, of course, they weren't allowed on the property. Right. But man, but those people at that clinic, they like put us like in the CEO's office because they know we weren't there by choice. Mm-hmm. They like yeah, right. kind of took care of us, considered like wine and dine, you know. What I mean? but, um, and then she, they came in. It was myself and her mother. We were in there watching movies and chilling, and they said it was successful. Um, we just, you know, the process was successful. I'll let you come back in a second. And then within five minutes, they rushed in the door. She hemorrhaged and she won't stop bleeding. Now the ambulance shows up and now we're at the hospital two miles away and they can't stop her bleeding to the point where they're like, she's kind of going in and out, but they're like, we want to take her uterus. And she's like, no. <laughs> I'm alert enough to tell them no. And no. I, I declined that medical treatment. Yes. But she would not stop bleeding. But I didn't see it. And I remember to this day, um, they was like, we have to do, we have to do something. And I remember this doctor who was on call comes in and it's Adidas track shoot, Spanish, cool guy. And he shakes my hand and says, I'm going to take care of your wife like that. And he walks into this room. And I remember standing outside of that door in that yeah. room, I, that, 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 that ER uh, surgical room, literally for three and a half, four hours, never took my eyes off that door like a watchdog. I was so distraught yeah. um, but they had to slow down the bleeding and um i have the same kind of surgery if you have uh, like bleeding in your lungs okay the pulmonary area uh they they would do a pulmonary embolism right 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 so um 
it was experimental actually for me to have that. Mm -hmm. It was an experiment. Um, and so I had a femoral artery embolism. And that's oh, my they basically yeah. shot super glue. Yeah. Little <laughs> shots super glue. And super glue. So they, would, super... they go up, they go so up, they slow down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So that, I didn't bring any tissue in here. Lord have mercy. So, you know, that too. I'm going to miss this out loud right now. Yeah. Just to make me realize this is what uh, my life is. And you know, that took us over the edge. That's oh, I'm sure. When, when to, like faith and, you know, God, why, why us, what have we done? Uh, yeah. You know, playing game. We never blamed each other. Um, but we we questioned ourselves. Were, were we rushing ourselves? Should we have waited? You know, that kind of stuff. And then, you know, a lot of people were, um, we really lost a lot of friends at the time then because a lot of people, we took it personal when a lot of friends didn't just, just show up and just help out and do something like that. We were sunk in place. Mm. Again, but let me ask you a question, though. Um, I understand you taking it personally, but you remember before when you said that people just didn't know what to say when it happened. So oh. they probably really didn't know yeah. what it to say. This it took a while to realize that again. Yeah. Because okay. in the moment, you're like, you where's know, everybody? Yeah, where's everybody? You know? on, on the flip side, though, I I did have friends, like a couple of friends, who where it's like they didn't know what to say. They would just call and just have like regular, like normal, this is my life, this is what's going on conversations. So like I had a friend um, that was pregnant both times. We were pregnant at the same time. Ugh. She was still pregnant. This with the second time, yeah. and so she would just call me like normal and just talk to me like normal. I think she was trying to uh, like keep like a little bit of normalcy that I had in my life, and even I cut her, I shut her out. I did. I closed her out. I couldn't do it. Like okay. I didn't want everybody else to close me out, but my my one person who was there, like I had to, I had to shut her out. I had to. That's that's because interesting. It was hard for me. Now, my this friend, she was pregnant with me the first time as well. Right. And um, our babies are a month and a half apart. And I was in the delivery room when her baby was born. Oh, my gosh. The second time, though, I couldn't do it. You couldn't do it. You couldn't there do was it. so much more going on in my brain at the time. I was right. like, I can't do this right. Like, I have to just shut I went into the darkness. I did. I just went into that little dark place. Like I was depressed. I was sad. I was angry. The second time I was angry. Like I was really, really angry. Yeah. But the second time, um, we actually got like a little push, right? Because now we've gone through two extreme life threatening situations where we're trying to have kids and like it just seemed my body was just not going to do it and at that point we were no longer willing to take the risk with my life because at this right. point we were gambling with my life right and so we discussed it and we talked about it and um it, that actually led us to fostering okay that actually led us to fostering you so not full on adoption, but like fostering. Let's see, like, you know, let's go on this journey and let's just see where it takes us. And, okay. Um, so we became foster parents and we had about 10 kids. 10 kids total. In and out. Seven at one time. Mm -hmm. so, oh. We were only approved for three kids. <laughs> and there were so many kids and there wasn't enough bed, enough beds. They kept calling us and was like, hey, can you take this in group? Can you take this? What were the age ranges? Uh, three of them was two, but our oldest was <laughs> yeah, oldest was eight that really stayed with us. But there was a girl that was eleven was that 11 would or come, 12, that would come every other weekend. weekend on the weekends or every other weekend. Okay, so you had okay a quite a range of yes. ages. Yes, our cars were too small. We had to literally go to the dealership and trade them in for. We got a suburban and a four door pickup because we had to tell our children we could never go nowhere in one just, in one car. Yeah, so. <laughs> How was, did that help you in the healing process, having all these kids around? You know what? I'm going to speak. I believe, I'm going to let it talk, but I, I believe it did. Okay. And until 
uh, we say tragedy struck again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, like, <laughs> so, um, yes, I, I would say yes. Um, and when I say it helps because it, it's a, it's a mindset shift. So okay. you, you, your mind, you have to be mentally prepared. And so my, my mindset, instead of being in a dark place, like now I have all these kids and, you know, they need love and they want love. So the mindset that I had, I had a mindset shift. And, um, a couple of them, we had to be on our toes. Like there was two of them that really act like act out, like try to run away. Like I had tennis stuff shoes. at school, but the kid had straight A's. He was he was a genius. Straight A's, but his behavior, genius. he didn't want to attach himself to us because he kept being moved from because home he kept being home, hurt. Home, okay, he kept hurt, so he would act out. But he said he was gonna run away. So it's, I got tired of like trying to hold them and tell them to stop because he'd be like, they're trying to hurt me and try to call nine one one on us. Yeah, and this stuff. So she was like, she's trying a new thing. She put her tennis shoes at the door and she opened the door. She said, go. She put his shoes, tennis shoes on, run. and just run in the neighborhood until he get tired. It was great. I was it like, was great I was like you crazy. <laughs> I was crazy. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> but I, would, I would run after him. And they, you know, we do that a couple a couple times a week. We would run after him. Um, but to the he was one of the, the boys, Tim and he had a brother. So this we is were the going to adopt. Like when they came to us, they had um Basically, the system had exhausted all like family members and everything, and Families they said that nobody for life. would take the kids. Like nobody wanted them. Wow. So we were like a last resort. So when they called us, it was like these kids are probably they gonna stay here. And this family, nobody right? else. Yeah, and this family member, this family member, this family member, they live thirty minutes from you, but they have we have on record they said no five times. Yeah. They, they said, it's they your problem. You took everybody. them to the system, right? Now, this is what I'm going to tell you. This is what happened. Everybody. We started the process. Um, we were three months in. And they uh-huh. said it would take six months for them to be ours. They were six and eight. Yes. Yeah. Six and eight. I mean, I mean, we took these boys. Five. They were five. Five, five and eight. I mean, they took these boys on their first cruise, took them out of the country. Disney. To, took them like to Disney for the first time. Took them. Put them in like stem cell camps and stem camps, not stem cells, stem camps. Yeah. <laughs> I said stem cell. Yeah, stem camps, stem okay, camps. yeah. <laughs> stem, stem and science. Stem camps. Camps. science. And science. Okay. science. I know, yeah. And then uh, soccer camps and things. We did all this, and then next you know, you know, the guardian that lightning comes to us in case worker and is like, hey, yeah, the grandma wants to spend time with them. And we're like, the same grandma that doesn't want to do with them? It's like, yeah. We gotta, let them, we gotta let them start going over there on the weekends. They went one weekend. And then by that Wednesday, they were like, oh, she's going to adopt them. When I tell you I ripped up my faucet license, he did. He did. I ripped it up. I said, never again. So we had three kids. Yeah. At the time, there was five because a couple of them trenches and back. So them two went to grandma. We had three kids left. Them groups, sibling group of three. Three boys. And uh, we sat and we talked. And uh, actually, a prophet came forward and said to us, God said, when you accept the seed in your, to your home that's not yours, she's going to bless you with your own seed. And I was like, well, I thought that's what we were doing, foster. And all right, so she brought up private adoption. And this is how we got into this journey. So basically, the week these three boys were, we already knew, we became their godparents, that they were going transitioning back. They were their mom, their mom followed back. the protocol. Always. They've been checking on her for 90 days. She's good. They're going back in, you know. And long story short, so called, called, Broke it down to three adoption agencies, found one, uh, okay. called them, filled out the paperwork. It's like, all right, put down the down payment. You know, adoption is expensive. <laughs> put down the down payment. And literally, like, it was like a week later they were transitioning. I remember we was going to take them to school. It was like two days before they were going home. And she's calling my name, and she, like, fell out in the shower. Like, I'm surprised she didn't hurt herself. And she was just super weak. And we was like, I don't know what was going on. So I just... Got her dressed fast and called my mom. And my mom, I think, I think we went to the hospital. My mom took the kids in, in, my, in, in the suburban to school. And I went in there. And they did all these tests on her, all these tests. And I remember these doctors told her after the two incidents, I don't think we told you, that she could never naturally get pregnant again after all of this. Okay. And so they do all these tests. They do all these stress tests, EKGs. They do all this stuff. 
The lady comes in, she says, um, you're pregnant. I was like, what? <laughs> and I told the lady, I actually put the lady out and I told her to, so the doctor come back to get out and get, do a blood draw. Because mm-hmm. I, Why are you putting her out? <laughs> because of course she had the wrong lady. I'm like, there's no way that, like, there's no way. You um, told her to go get the right file and come back. <laughs> yeah, go get the right file or do another she test. Because all you did was urine. Was, um, she had to do a blood test. You picked somebody her. else urine. <laughs> but right. it was the, uh, you, you like ran through that. Like you ran. I'm sorry. To walk a little bit. Go back. Let's rewind mm-hmm. to the kids and the the adoption process. So when all I felt like the foster care system was ripping my heart out of my chest. Yeah, I could see that. Like I was in a healing place. I think we were probably at month eight. And I was in a good place of healing, and then they just came and like ripped the rug from under me. Yeah, and I was like I don't, I don't want this to happen again. I can't have it happen to me again because okay, I forgot all this trauma already here, and yeah. I don't, I can't have this. Happen. That is how we got to our adoption journey. That's how we got there. Yeah. I needed mm-hmm. it to be permanent. I needed to know that like nobody can come. And take my baby from me. Right. Because this is my baby and I love them. And I'm like, this. I have to have something more, more permanent. So I, I would say like fostering was kind of like the bridge yeah. that we needed. Like we knew that we could do it, but now we see that we can do it. Now it's, yeah. With those kids like they were at home. I love those. All of them. Yeah. Yeah. One of my baby's birthdays was <laughs> like two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Um, and okay, so now we're pregnant. Now we're pregnant. Yeah, the blood test came back positive. Do straight in. Um, I yes. definitely. And one thing oh, my God, that they don't ever tell you, they don't ever tell you is, um, when you have trauma, birth trauma, like I did, the trauma like lives with you. But only in that circumstance. Mm. So I had to have pre, like prenatal. There's a special name for it. It's just like prenatal therapy for moms who had a loss or a miscarriage. Okay, I forgot the name. I had to, I had to go when that baby started moving in my stomach. It was real, and and like like fear was taking over, and I couldn't yeah. let fear take over because. Yeah. Like, I got to get this baby here. It was so crazy because they told us that we had, a, you know, high risk. It was like, we're going to go a different route. You need a, a paternal, uh, maternal fetal yeah. specialist. Jesus. Maternal fetal specialist. Parentologist. Parentologist. So basically, <laughs> literally, I'm, I'm working on a show in town called Zombie House with them on Amy, and I'm talking to one of the town one day. It's so weird. It's like everybody is like we're all supposed to be at set, and it's like raining, and everybody's, and it's like I'm sitting next to him, and to be honest with you, the Holy Spirit said, you know, tell him about your pregnancy. You know what I mean? Tell him mm. they know my story, and I tell yeah. him, and he's like, "Wow, this is amazing! Oh, we're so happy!" I was like, "I won't tell nobody," and I was like, "Yeah, we gotta look for it, a specialist." And he was like, "Wait a minute, what kind of specialist?" He was like, dude, my neighbor, my next door neighbor oh my God. is a oh my God. specialist and she's the best in town. So we looked her up and it was like, she is the one. And so then put him on a, we, we're trying to get into the office. We already knew about her, actually. We tried to get into her office. Oh, yeah. I tried and to we get can't in. get into her office. We knew about, we looked her up. He calls three her months. on the phone. It was a three month wait. He calls her on the phone. She's like, tell her to come up here tomorrow. See, I, just like that, and she tell me. In, and th- and this lady wrote out an entire birth plan for her, an entire yeah. pregnancy for everything that needed to be done. Every doctor, every everything. And guess what? This pregnancy went perfect. Yeah. Of course, they didn't let her go full term. Okay. They thirty six weeks. They said we have to induce or uh, do a C section at 36 weeks. We can't let you. Okay, go. that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. Was it a C section? No, okay. There's no, there's no going to happen. No, no giving like that. Yeah. No, no. Okay. Okay. Um, so, so hold on. Stop. Stop. So you go through this. You have a 
um, excellent pregnancy, a C-section. How are you feeling? Um, I, I mean, I'm overjoyed because I, I like this is like what we prayed for, yeah, right? Mm-hmm. This is what we've been waiting for. Uh, I think at that point it was 13 years. Yeah, 13 years. Yeah. For this little baby, 13 years. And so, um, remember, we have an adoption. We did not put down the deposit. We were that was what the discussion was. We, we didn't put, put the deposit down. No, we did not put down the deposit. We paid the full amount. Oh yeah, we yeah, 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 yeah. We did. Oh, we did. We, we didn't put the adoption. Yeah. Okay. So you pay for the adoption, pay for and you get pregnant. It. Yeah. You have the baby, but you still have this. Going on, so are you like on a waiting list or or something? So we had to do it's an extensive process. It's the yeah, it's it's pretty extensive. So we had a home study, and then you okay. had to do um, kind of like a, a mag like a magazine flyer and a video. I what it's, it's called. And a video, but like it's a, all for the birth mom. So this is how they they shop. They present, present them. you to birth moms they come for, right? Okay, so they you know pictures background and what you do, what you like to do, are you are you religious, do you go to church, where are your beliefs? Yeah, the animals. Like, yeah, oh, do that. you have animals? Do you like just yeah. you know, but you can't just celebrate? listen. You gotta show like, pictures and everything. Yeah, it's, it's, a book. it's a book. I, we, we might okay. Yeah, I gotta it's copy it. Like maybe seven years. Okay, so I have to ask this question. Okay, so you have the baby. Yeah. And you're still willing to adopt. Yes. And that's it. So we told them we did and they were, and they were like we well, put it on hold. We we froze it. We froze, we froze our, our um. We froze it. It was only supposed to be for one year. They will only let us do it for one year. Yeah, we did freeze and, it. And and they will after one year. They will, we'll after one year. Money. If you say you still don't want it, then you're out of your money. You lose your money, basically. And you're talking so, like you're talking like north of thirty grand, forty grand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Oh, I know. For one year, Mark. I like. I had a hard time. Like, I really want to do this, but also don't be insensitive to the fact that I've been trying to have this baby for a long time and he is here and he deserves my full attention. And I told them, right. I need another year with my baby to give him, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I didn't know how I was, I mean, come on, two hundred two. I didn't know how I was going to do that. So I'm like, let me just. Focus here in this time, in this next year, I will get all of the stuff that I need to get done. So at the two year mark, we will be ready. And the people understood and they were, they, they allowed it. Like this is, they don't give yeah, people the CEO that, of the company had they don't give people us. that grace. They gave me that grace because I came to them and I was honest and I was open and I was like, I do, I really want it, but also understand that this was 13 years in the making and I just want to bask right here. Well, yeah, and yeah they, absolutely. And they let me. <laughs> so, you know. So I always have to go back. I have to, I got to ask Giorgio, what kind of basking were you doing in this moment? Oh, I was loving it. And I had, <laughs> I had myself, my, my little boy, my little man. Yeah. I was happy with whatever guy, whatever guy blesses, whatever sex, girl or boy. Yeah. But it was, it was, it was amazing. It was uh, like, uh, long journey that paid off with a great reward and that's why we named him royal because we felt like he was you know like royalty absolutely lives at the time it was just like this is the name like he needs to have a name that's like you know welcome to the world you know? right <laughs> um so yeah it was amazing it was a great feeling it was a great feeling and i uh i tried to not travel as much at the time and i just you know, we raised, we raised them. And then, literally, after the two year mark was up, and it was like, and it was like, how many months after the, after our two year mark? Um, it was like I remember I was in Atlanta doing a Google commercial, and I got a phone call, and it was like we we found a match. Yeah, we found a match. And it was like it was like the babies do like, like the, so <laughs> in June. It was like the end of June. So I guess that would be like three doing, months after, yeah. and and the baby was due in August. I was like, okay, I need to know more. I need to like, I want to know all the details. So right, and the call, we did the the call with the, the birth mom, with the birth mom and father. They both. This is the this is the cool thing about it. Usually, it's just a birth mom. 
that like either like the bird dad is out of the picture or whatever. But this one was a couple that said we cannot take care of the baby we have it. We need to find him a good home. And it was it was, it was so it was amazing. That, that is unusual. Yeah. 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 So it's both well, we did yeah. a call with them and um it was a hit. And um our second child was born exactly on his due date. <laughs> Okay. Not before, which is also a very rare thing. Eight, eight, eighteen. He's born at eight, eight, eighteen. At eighteen thirty. In New York, in Long Island. In New York. Yeah, that's a New York. We had to travel up to New York. We had to stay in New York for like a number of weeks before we can leave I with him. For a month. I was there for like a month. month. Yeah, it was like. So yeah, and and his that name is Roman. Have, his name is Roman. He also had to have a strong name. Um, Absolutely. He. Uh, his story is not without a wrinkle of an issue there. That's a whole other podcast. His story man. is not <laughs> without a okay. or Okay. No, I'm just saying, we can tell you the brief of it, but it's I'll serious. I'll give y'all just a rundown. So we are in uh, New York. So anybody else out there who wants to adopt, like I was, New York and California have the exact same adoption laws. It's the same. Okay. Um, where they give the birth mom 30 days to change their mind. Right. It's not that here. It's like three days. No, it's here. It's automatic now. No, it's automatic now. Like now it's when you like, change. Yeah, they think the laws just changed here. here. Here, when you when the birth mom signs, it's like, okay, rights are terminated. Atlanta is three-day grace period, okay. and, and New York is 30 days. So 30 we, days. we hit that wrinkle where we, we hit the wrinkle at the three-day mark. Where the so so was he bad. was born at a Catholic hospital. These are all okay. things to know beforehand. These are all things to know beforehand. Um, Catholic hospital, they do not believe in adoption at all. Mm. At least that one did. No, no, it's not just that one. It's the Catholic. <laughs> they don't believe it. So the Catholic hospital uh, nurses had a talk with the mom before she left the hospital and told her that that was her baby. He needed to take care of her baby. There was no reason that she should be given this baby. Mm. It's crazy because she's, she's selected us she's through her agency. Us. She in- interviewed us. She signed the rights over. We gave her, we gave them money, thousands of dollars to, 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 to transition for like three months okay. afterwards yeah. from pregnancy. Yeah, like $75, dollars, something like that. Um, which was all included. Um, but so what happened was we literally was like at the hospital. They gave us our own room. They kicked us out of the room. They kicked us out of the room. And then we noticed the day they kicked us out of the room, it was like, you got to go get a hotel or something like that. It was like, well, because he was in the NICU, by the way. We'll tell mm-hmm. that story in a second. Way. But she, oh, okay. they was allowing her to come in and breastfeed and this bit our son and when we weren't there and trying to get to, to build connect. the attachment bond. to build the attachment do the skin the skin and mm-hmm. yeah i actually had to take this to like i took this up the chain at the hospital i literally had to take it up the chain because um i felt like they were intervening on a private manner like yeah, it, it was it was it was border, it was a legal thing. It was borderline legal, and I could have sued the hospital for what they did if things did not turn out favorable. Um, but but she so they got her in the hospital, you know, whatever, and then she was conflicted. She was torn. This this woman just had a child. Her hormones are all over the place, and then she has right. You know, she has this promise that she's made on one end, and then she has these people in her ear on another end. And it's just like, and then her hormones, of course, are everywhere. So I wouldn't say at day five she changed her mind. So the child is still in the NICU, baby's in the NICU. The hospital will not release the baby to me. I noticed that he stayed in the NICU a lot longer than he was supposed to because okay. they wouldn't release him to me. Even though we had a paperwork. But legally, the, the paperwork had already been signed with the lawyers and everything. So legally, they couldn't release him to her either. Even though she had the opportunity to change her in the mind, middle. She still did. So they were in the middle of it. So when he was released from the hospital, they released him to the attorney and not either one of us. 
Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yes. The attorney that we hired. The attorney we hired. That we hired. Okay. You don't have to <laughs> no, no. I'm not talking about we pay for it. Don't, don't do that. The attorney that we hired on to represent <laughs> us and to remove the rights from her. It's like, right. we hired this guy. It's not like this, you know what I mean? And it's just like, and it felt like he started deciding with them. As he sided with, with them. He actually, actually, he did side with them because before everything was said and done, um, the so the baby came home from the hospital with me, and he was with me for like three days. And they called me from the attorney's office, and they said that mom changed her mind and she wanted the baby back. I said, okay, what you know? Where do you you know? Where is this all taking place? They prefer that it happen at the attorney's office. So I took the baby back and I gave him back. And I told the attorney, I was like, well, you know, um, she has to bring all of her home, everything. Everything that I have here is mine and it's for my child. She has to bring this stuff for her. So I wouldn't, that, that was the main thing for me to do. But also it was my stuff. I paid a lot of money for it. And I paid a lot of money for all this. And at this point, it had been so emotional that I was just like, you know what? If it's not for me, it's not for me. And I'm just going to, all the way in New York, okay? I'm having an authentic, your experience. I'm staying in a brownstone in, in Brooklyn with a two and a half year old and a newborn. And I took him back. I took him back and I came back to the, the brownstone. I packed up everything. And when I got, when I got to the attorney's office, uh, the birth dad was there. He was, he was hysterical. He was hysterical. He was hysterical. He was crying and he was like, this is your baby. I don't know why they're doing this to you. I don't know why everybody's taking you guys through all this. Like, please, like, do not take him inside. And I'm like, I'm not going to jail for kidnapping. This, this is how it's going to be. But he was, and he did not. He, he was very like. So was the birth mother on the scene at all? She was there, but the attorneys hid her. Okay. They hid her. Yeah. 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 This is a whole movie. Did you yeah. see my mouth is open? <laughs> So, he, so I, took, I took him back. I gave him back. And um, after that, you know, I told him, I was like, I don't know what's going on here, but I cannot keep going back and forth like this. Do you remember yeah. that one part I forgot about? Remember we told you about the 30 days? Yes. We're okay. talking. No, no. We told him about 30. We told him about yeah, it. Well, so, we're not. They, no, we're not. Are you sure? I'm, because you're, I'm oh, yeah, it was no, after. You was no, on the road. You was no. on the road. I left. Yeah, you was on the road. I, 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 I packed up the brownstone. I left. I was like, forget it. I left. I drove. We drove all the way back to Charlotte. Got to, yeah, Charlotte. Because I was in Atlanta at the time we working. We were super close. We were almost there. And we drove yeah. all the way back. I remember, with my two-year-old, perfect through all of this. And that, and, and we stopped. And we stopped overnight. And we, you know, we wanted to rest. So we slept. I slept so good, like the best sleep I ever got in my life. I slept so good. Like, I was so at peace. Like, God, if you not, I, because I don't want, I don't want anything that doesn't really belong to me because I don't want that right. long term effects of that. Like, if it's not mine, I know that there's going to be turmoil and just drama continues. Absolutely. And when I woke up the next morning, I was still headed south to Atlanta. And um, I got a call. And I got a call from the birth dad, and he was like, she is embarrassed. She was embarrassed to to say, call me or reach out or anything because of the way she acted. But she was like, after one night, she knew that um, that, that was not, that that was my baby. She didn't know what to do. He never stopped crying, like, the whole time. He didn't. And she was, mm. she didn't know what to do. And so he called, and he was like, please, 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 please come pick up her son. So, She's in Charlotte. I'm in Charlotte. Okay, You're right. I, 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 my brain was already there. You have drove from New York to Charlotte. I'm in Charlotte. I had to turn around. And she's about to see me this day, and she called me. She's like, "I'm going back." I said, "What?" Yeah, I turn around, <laughs> right? And I went to go pick him up. Did you try and stop her, Georgia? No. I was like, like, you know what? what? Nope. I was like, you know what? I prayed so hard that night. I remember yeah. I was on a show and a certain show and. I remember a couple of crew members praying with me, holding hands, mm. praying. Uh, and and I woke up and, and I was like, okay, please drive safe. Yeah. I turned around. <laughs> okay. I, I went back. 
Um, I went back and the attorney, we, we met at like Skyhop or something like that. And it was nice. So you went all the way back to New York? Way back. I went all the way back. It was night. It was morning when I got the call early in the morning. It was night by the time I got back. Yeah, I had the hotel room. And she called me and told me she secured the package. Remember? Secured the package. <laughs> <laughs> secured the package. They brought me my baby back. And um, you need you need this form. Like they have to clear you to move to leave the state yep. when you're doing adoption that's out of state. It's like okay. an interstate. Yeah, oh interstate God. adoption, something like. Yeah, you can't. Some kind of like paper. It's a it's a paper that has to be signed, like a legal document. Like by if the you judge. leave, if you leave, yeah, you gotta wait for the judge. If you leave state lines, it could be considered kidnapping. Like kidnapping. Yeah, 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 yeah. The judge had the paper signed the next day. Because he heard. I had been there all that time, and the judge had the paper signed the next day. So the next day, I was actually able to get on the road and take my baby, babies at this point, and go. And I went. And guess what? It's not over yet. But it's not over yet. Do you I can't even say anything? I have no words at this point. <laughs> a month. Oh, it was like a month after. So um, we were there for a month. A month after the um, all of this happened, the attorney's office called and they said that they had made a mistake on the paperwork. So technically, the whole time that I had the baby, I wasn't supposed to have him. Yeah. They had her sign like the I mean, wrong they paperwork. They had her sign the wrong paperwork. And the judge approved the wrong paperwork. The judge right? approved the wrong. Nobody caught the flaw. So I was never supposed to have the baby. So like we literally, wait, wait, right? Because the 30 days was over. The, she wouldn't be able to change her the mind 30 anymore. 30 days was over. She wouldn't be able to change her mind. But, but they had to go to court to physically terminate the rights. And he told me, these were his exact words. He said, all we could do at this point is hope and pray. But when she goes to court and she comes in, she signs the papers. Because literally... She signed the wrong. They were signing the wrong papers, so technically, she, she had another thirty days, and she could take she the baby. Right, it's another thirty. Right. And it was like this woman, and at the same time, we were she, getting contacted from her, back. talking about she, she changed her mind. She changed her mind and stuff again, and she wanted again. To that. So we're like, "There's no like, way I she's gonna go to." The only way we can keep him is if she go to court on this court date that's coming up she in like two weeks, and she has to sign in front of the judge. But she's saying that she wants her baby back. But she's saying that. And we're like, oh my God, we're not going to do this again. Please. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we get to the court date. She went to court court date and she signs. No fight. No fight. No fight. After praying, we've been praying so hard. She signed the paper. Oh my God. It sounds like somebody was probably in her ear. Yeah. Yeah. Again. Again, yeah. Again. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. 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 Okay, so. Now, uh this is an open adoption, too. It's open. So, um, in my in the documents, I agreed. What they wanted was uh, monthly updates and then, like, birthday updates after after a year, birthday updates, you know, like, special occasions and stuff like that. Okay. So, I um, have thoroughly, thoroughly upheld my end of the bargain. At year, um, right before year one or two, that's so long. I can't remember if it was year one or year, I think it was year two, uh, when I sent the birthday, like photos of him for his birthday and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't hear back from her. So I have lost contact with mom. I don't know what she, I, I, I Google her every month. I Google her because I'm looking for her. At one point she was in um, like a facility in New York. Um, I'm not sure if she's still there. She was there for like two years. Okay. Um, we still talk to birthday. I still talk to But we don't ask birthday. him about her because they don't talk to each other. They don't anymore. talk to each other. They don't talk to each other. I think that's so interesting that the birth dad was so... Let me put it instrumental in this. Put it in perspective. Labor and delivery. She ended up having to have a C section, but they they were trying naturally, right? That vaginal birth. I was holding her head. She was holding one leg, and the birth dad was holding the other leg. While the doctor was, we were in labor and delivery with her the, the whole time. <laughs> yeah, he's there. That's he crazy. That is so. 
I'm telling you because the birth dad is typically not in these stories never, you know, never. ever. No, but he's there and he's present and he, um, I, st- I still send uh, photo updates, like videos. Um, his birth dad plays soccer. He plays soccer. <laughs> he's really good at soccer. <laughs> he plays soccer. So let me ask you. Okay, so how old is, is Roman now? Almost five. Almost five. He's so cute, y'all. Thank you. So cute. His name right, um, right here on the end. This guy. Their kids are beautiful. Thank you. Um, so does he know that he's adopted yet? How have you handled that? So, um, so we talk about where they Obviously, we have one more. We have another one after. Oh, I know. We haven't gotten there yet. Oh, I know. I know. I know. But in that, uh, we talked about, like, because they got to see my belly grow, right? And so, okay. the babies grow, right? So, that baby grew in my belly, but he grew in my heart. Oh, I love that. Yes. I love that. And I appreciate you <laughs> telling him so early. I think that's so important. As an adoptee myself. We're going to fully. He, I have a, so for Christmas, uh, almost every year I try to do like a, like a photo book from the year, like all the adventures they have for the year. And I give it to them for Christmas uh, as a gift. So his first Christmas, he got a book. He, of course, he's super tiny. He doesn't know. But the book is here. It's a photo book. And it has the entire journey. It has mom, dad, us, like the hospital, um, like different clips around New York and stuff that we did, um, like leading up to and while we were there. And, um, oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, take your time. <laughs> Emotional talking about it. It's a, it, it's an emotional story. And uh, when he's ready, um, that's why I kept the communication lines open with his parents. You know, yeah. I don't ever want one day my baby to wake up and any kind of like identity crisis. Yeah, it's true identity from him. Mm. Like. Like mm-hmm. I want him to know that he really, he really came from a place of love. Like his mother loved him so much that she knew that she couldn't give him the best, and that's what she wanted for him. Mm-hmm. She fought until like the very end. She fought because in her heart she really wanted him, but in the end she really felt like she had to make the, the decision that was going to be the best for him. Right, but I've I've kept those lines open. I mean, I love I that. Have you know accepted prayer requests on social media, and I am not. I'm not that. I, I didn't used to be very open. I share my kids on social media because they're not just my kids. Like <laughs> these these are the world's kids. They have to know like God didn't just give them to me. He gave them to me to share. Like. I mean, they're all pure miracles. Yeah. Pure. Like, just. Yeah, transition into the last one. Ooh. Yeah, so. Because there are three family. There are three. There are so, three. baby number three. <laughs> We're living in Atlanta. This is a crazy, 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 crazy story. No, this, this is like a three part movie, man. So, tell you. When we, so, we had two boys, right? And everybody is like, don't you want to have a girl? And I'm like, no, why? Like, I have two boys. Like, you know, it's good. Like, I don't need to have a little girl. Hashtag boy mom. Boy mom, baby. Yeah. <laughs> like, boy mom, yeah. It's like, everybody, everybody is like, you need a daughter. You're going to want a girl. And the craziest thing is a lot of times this these phrases are coming from people who know that, like, I've had to have blood transfusions and plasma and platelet mm. transfusions. And I've had to stay in the NICU or the ICU. And I've had like all this recovery time. Like people who know, like, when, why are you asking me about another baby? Another. So, right. um, 
the summer, like the 2020, okay, 2020 comes. And um, because of COVID uh, and the world shutting down, I guess our adoption agency didn't have birth, um, like they didn't have enough adoptive parents, like to go back out because of like the state that of the world, you know, the world was in, like the world, world, yeah. So that brought it back up inside of me, like, oh, I mean, it's two years, for, it's just too fresh, but I'm still like, oh, we need adoptive parents, so <laughs> we should <laughs> do this again. And, and Georgia, uh, what did you think? Should you do this again? I was like, let's go. <laughs> oh, okay, I love your support. I didn't even fight it. I was like, all right, let's let's scrap the seatbelt on. Let's go. Let's just hope it's better than last time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. So we are, I, ha- I had a call with the agency, our same agency that we went through the first time. And um, they told me all the stuff you know, that was going on. They was, they, you know, they were going to give you a discount because you're a returning family. And it was like, okay. But it wasn't like really a discount. Like 5% <laughs> off or something. 5%. <laughs> For effort. Yeah, yeah. And um, I'm like, I just need to like ponder on this a little bit, you know. And one day I randomly get a call from one of my friends who's an attorney. And she's like, I found your daughter. Daughter, like I don't have a my daughter is not lost. I don't have one. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's like, no, I found your daughter, and she was super adamant, and she had like a birth mom come in, and she wanted to do just a, like a super private, like not go through the agency, not go through all the people, like attorney to attorney, basically. Yeah, can you find me uh, an adoptive family? Basically, had a call with this mom, everything seemed good. I got a call back a couple of days later. She selected us. Then we had to find another attorney. We found another attorney. Um, we go through the process again. We do a home study. This time we put a down payment down. Yeah, yeah. Not a home down payment. Down payment or the whole. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's the down payment. We paid a portion. It's the portion. It's the attorney fee. It's the same like it. It's the same like it. Okay. So we... Um, it's crazy. So we get the attorney, we do a new home study, we like everything, fingerprints, background check, all this, all this stuff. We do everything. And um the baby is too like super quick, right? Like I think maybe we had a month, maybe, to do everything, to get everything done, to be approved, everything. And so uh, we were in Georgia, but we were kind of still there and here. And so everything was being done here. And so the weekend that the mom went into um, labor, we got a call. You know, she's going into labor. We drove down and uh, we stayed. And then literally we didn't hear anything. We weren't allowed to go to the hospital because of COVID. COVID. COVID's here. So we we can't do anything. The attorney was allowed to go. But that's the paperwork. But and she was it. like, I'll handle everything and I'll call you guys. Yes. Yeah, so she was going to handle everything and call her. The mom, um, the birth mom, had the baby. She had the baby on her father's birthday. Father's deceased. She felt like it was a sign to keep the baby. Okay. All right. How can you be mad at that? I can't be mad at that. Like, right. Yeah. I wasn't mad at, at all. And everybody was like, I'm like, no, I'm not upset because, I mean, you put yourself in other people's shoes sometimes. Like, right. maybe she was battling with it the whole time and mm-hmm. she just needed some kind of time. We bought a bunch of stuff, though, and we had a nursery, but it was just like still we, like, we you lost, know what? We lost the money. Yeah. And we lost our attorney yeah. fees. Attorney fees. We lost everything. We just some thousands. <laughs> but um, so we, we basically, we went home, you know, and I was like, okay, but now it's here, right? So now it's in your face and it's, pre- it's very just like, like there. And so I started looking at adoption agencies again. But this time, for whatever reason, these adoption agencies wanted like $50,000. 56, 60. Yeah. He has the number, 56, 60. <laughs> Yeah. Like they, no, fifty six thousand, sixty thousand, like literally, were, like yeah, like that. Yeah, we, oh, yeah, in Atlanta, they wanted it. It was like 
that the thing that they told us it was so crazy there was like you can do th- so Atlanta had a need for more African American parents yeah. adopted. Yeah. Yeah. Like the need mm-hmm. is huge. It's huge. And mm-hmm. um but then so when I went to them and I was like, Where do you think I have to get off my well, here are some fundraising ideas. You can go to the community and you can do this, this, and And I said, let me, I said, wait. I said, you may go to the same community that you so desperately need to adopt. You want me to go to those people to raise funds to adopt? I said, it doesn't make any sense to me. You, it doesn't you know, make any sense. Why is there not? Why is there not a grant program or something there? Then, if you need African American, then I mean, fifty thousand dollars to be stretched, and and you want me to go to the community that you need and request money from them in fundraising events. Mm. Sit in my car one day, and I just I had to really have a conversation with God. I was like, God, something's wrong with this. So the picture that is being painted before me. It's not a very clear picture. This does not make sense. I need you to help me make sense of this. Yeah. Help me to make sense because it doesn't make sense. And so <laughs> I didn't get that clear audible voice. I just started having dreams about babies. I didn't get a clear audible. I didn't. And I'm like, Okay, like it wasn't, it didn't put me completely at peace, but it was just like, okay, how he's gonna work it out, how he's gonna work it out. Yeah, I love your faith. A month later, <laughs> one, I don't even know if it was exactly one month later. Um, I found out I was pregnant. But you were already yeah. pregnant. You know, pregnant. Pregnant, yeah, I was pregnant. So yeah. the reason why I could not. She was pregnant at the time that adopted the adopted baby is because I was already going to have a baby, and God is like, stop, stop, yeah, stop. You look stop. at it also way you look at the the word I was given was like accept the seed, and God bless you with your own. Every time yeah. we go to the adoption part, she gets pregnant. Yeah, <laughs> go to any adoption process, and we like sign or put put you know like money down. or money, and it's like she ends up pregnant. Wow. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. And this pregnancy? Um, so this pregnancy was a cross country move. Yeah, who's born because we lived in Atlanta. We moved to LA. My I remember doctor, when you moved to LA. Yeah. Yeah. My original doctor the one I told you about from here. Yeah. Um, called her and you know, like, hey, I am pregnant and again <laughs> and I'm not coming to Florida, but I'm going to LA. Okay. I have a great colleague that I studied with who is there. That's the same who I'm going to send you her information and send her all of your information. The whole file, everything. everything. Crazy. So when I arrived to LA, I already had my maternal fetal specialist. My maternal fetal specialist set up for me to have my OB. She set everything up for me. In LA. And put the plan all together, just like all together. <laughs> what she told me, though, oh, I, you know what? I missed a part with Royal. Mm-hmm. When Royal was born. Oh yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. When Royal was born, there was a window in the uterus. Like, like a, it's the 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 doctor told me it was a window, but it was a it's like a very thin piece of like like of the the uterus is very, very thin. Okay. And so, like, it could have ruptured or anything like that. And if that happened, it would have, it would have killed me and the baby. Okay. When he was born. That was the, my, my doctors told me, they counted on, they said, I can count on, on my one hand, how many people I have told not to get pregnant again. And I was on and they've been on that hand. 35 I years as doctors. It was me. I was in that one hand. And so I was not ever going to get pregnant again because. Right. Uh, it's right. high risk. And the yeah. fear. And so coming into this pregnancy, I'm thinking about this window in my uterus. Oh, my God. I'm having it. You know, I'm doing this again. I'm high risk. Um, and so when I went to the OBGYN first time, I told him this. 
tall black man. <laughs> a tall black man in LA. And um, I told him about this, this window in my uterus. And he was like, the thing about the body is, is that it healed itself. Mm-hmm. And so if you had a window the first time, you won't have a window this time because your body has that time to heal itself. The maternal fetal specialist did not see a need for me to be on any of the medications that I was on. Pregnancy number three. Pregnancy number three. <laughs> so the doctor says that it's healed. Like the that the body heals itself. So the window that was there would no longer be there. The maternal fetal specialist says uh, she doesn't see a reason, a medical reason for me to pass the blood thinner. But there is something else. So she said she didn't see a reason. Like there was really no reason for me to take them, but she didn't take me off of them just in case. She, she, it's like a, a, a mind, like a mental thing. Like, this got the first baby here. Like, we're gonna let's just keep the same regimen. Let's just keep with the same regimen. Um, we what we, we delivered at 36 weeks again. He said, Jen, he might have been like a couple days before. Um, he had blood sugar issues. All three of them were in the all NICU. Three, all all three. three of them had to go in the NICU. All three NICU babies. Roman was hungry. He swallowed food. Um, and a royal, in, he was served to be ingested food. <laughs> and Royce uh-huh. had some blood sugar. Royce had blood his, his blood sugar was low. And I told him, like, you know, we were, we were hungry. He was born, he wasn't born the latest, but he was born at three o'clock. Two o'clock in the afternoon. We got there like at seven. <laughs> yeah, he was born. He was born. <laughs> I like two o'clock in the afternoon. So I was like, "You're hungry? Like I haven't had anything to eat since yesterday." But um, in the with royal, with royal, I I got anti like, anxiety medication. So like I only mm. certain parts with royal. The the anesthesiologist in LA. He refused. He told it was in my plan. We talked before. But he would not give it to me. He just talked to you and kept you calm. He I was in there. He would not. He was just like he was supposed to <laughs> order it, have it in there. He would not. So I'm on the table, and you know, like a C-section, like it's like metal. Like, I watched door, the whole thing. And they like they like strap you in. So to for the yeah. doctor, they tilt you a little bit for the to, for the incision. So I'm mm-hmm. tilted on the board. I feel all of this. I smell them burning my skin, like everything, right? So I am freaked out. I'm panicked. I'm like, oh my God, I don't know if I could do this. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm not doing anything. Like, I'm just laying here. They're going to take You're just baby. laying there. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to take the baby out. Um, He comes out. You know, he's the normal size baby. He's full term size, mm-hmm. seven pounds, two ounces. No, it's true. And um, yeah, he, um, he came out and he cried and then, like, he stopped breathing. He swallowed food or something like that or something. I cut the umbilical cord. And then, you did? Yeah. Cut the umbilical cord. <laughs> and uh, I cut Learn the something new every day. <laughs> and um, and he's sitting there crying and cleaning them up, and then he just stopped breathing. Stop breathing. And all I heard was his alarm go off, and like 15 people ran into me. I know none of this. And they stuff. made me back up, and I just started praying and praying, and they were doing all this stuff and all that stuff and all that. And then he started crying again. Yeah. I was like, whew, not today. <laughs> they, I know, <laughs> right. Big, they pop this big red baby up. They show me my big red baby. And they take him to the NICU. They, the, the lady, she comes and she says, we need to go to the NICU. His blood sugar's a little low. We need to figure out why, you know, they do all that. And then they get me in my recovery room. And there's um, the guy who had, he has the, like, the siphon machine with the blood and all that stuff. And yeah, he comes like he's coming through, and he like makes a joke like, "We didn't need all of this. No, we didn't need all of this production today." And I, <laughs> so I just him. in case, because just in case you bled out. They had they yeah. had everything like they have everything there for special. And that was a, it. Was a great hospital, Cedar Sinai. Cedar Sinai. It's in Beverly Hills, seventy Cedar Beverly Hills, seventy Cedar Sinai is amazing. It's amazing. They're they're, they're they also awesome. specialize in pediatric. Yeah. <laughs> so let me ask you I, I have to I have to uh ask you this because we'll wrap it up here and I think this is gonna be a perfect way to end this. From 
the very beginning all the way to this. Tell me what your what this has done for your faith, your faith walk. Ooh, so for me, I I don't know, like after the first baby, I would say I won't even say after the first baby because you have to be a little bit crazy to be a person mm-hmm. like me who has almost died twice giving birth and still like believing that God had that in store for you. Like mm. you have to be a little bit crazy. I might be because I, I always believe that like that God had this in store for me. I don't know what the lesson was supposed to be, you know, here. Um, if it was just strengthening me, building me up, there was a lesson in all of that. But I, I, I don't think I ever really lost my faith because I still believe that God was going to give us a baby. I still believe that even after almost dying, even after like the heartbreak and the tragedy that I felt, I never lost faith. And just with each time, like I apply my faith that I've learned from this walk in all areas of my life and things look, you know, gloomy when it looks dark. I, I just keep, I, I always look at it and I'm like, I know whatever it is right now, like God is going to bring us through. He's going to see us how, like, it's a ram in a bush. It got to be because look at all of the things that he's done for us so far. He's going to continue. To Absolutely. And look out. Georgia. And I say that in, in, uh, in this whole process, I think my, my son, my son's. Okay, wait, buddy. We're on the phone right now. Oh, okay. He was going to get In this whole process, I feel like it strengthened my faith going through what we went through. And just like Christian just said, I, I, at times I get tested about certain situations, um, but I always just think back of, of, you know, what God did for us in this area in our lives. And it's like, he did that. I mean, this right here cannot be that hard. To, to 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 pray on and have faith on like I mean come on God I just need this one little thing like so I I apply it to my everyday life and everyday situations and I and I look at it as it's like if He brought us through that He can bring us through this or He can make this happen it really has strengthened my faith um and I, yeah it has that's what I can say it's, it's really strengthened my faith I think also that it went to our children in utero mm. that it I think so. That royal, that <laughs> that royal, all things are possible. He does not like. He does not believe that things just aren't possible. That, he, all things are possible with this kid. If he wants something and he comes to us and he asks us for it, and it's like I don't, I don't really know how we're gonna get that. He's like, well, he has a solution for it. Well, we can just. You know, do this, or well, we could just go here, or well, we could just do that. I love that. I, I love that. We literally say. Well, one thing that I absolutely loved, and I don't even know if you pick up on it when you're telling your story, through your entire story, the one consistent word I heard was prayer. I don't even know if you realize how many times you said the word, we prayed, I prayed, we prayed. And I think that's so important for yes. uh, people. To know, you got to pray. You have to pray. Yeah, too. You have to pray. Love language. Yeah. So thank you, my God. Thank you so much for telling your story. Thank you. Um, I know there's a book, so go ahead and let the people know about your book. Oh, yeah. um, so it's uh, the rough road to royalty. You bring the books out. You're supposed to bring the books out. Yeah, it's, the, uh, it's the rough road to royalty. Um, it's um and uh we uh we're revamping the website also revamping the cover of the book and also okay um, so, but we do um, it will be available again on amazon very soon the work for the royalty um and we uh, are in the process we have a future script mm-hmm. um, of course i've been in the industry 20 years producing and directing um and we're we're getting ready to try to do a faith-based film to um uh, to change lives and just give people hope and help them build their faith and just let them know that don't give up on God and God's promises. Mm. But, um, we're looking at to do this movie really soon. Um, yeah. I love it. 
Well, again, thank you so much for joining me on the Adoption Journey podcast. I told you, family, the story is amazing. I told you. <laughs> there it is. Rough Road to Royalty. And as soon, whenever it's available again on Amazon, I will be sure to drop the link as well for you to push it out there. Okay. All right. Thank you, thank you so much. Today. Thank you. Thank you. And me. until next week, thank you so much, family. Thank you. God bless.